Hi everyone. Welcome to the lecture three on the series of excretory physiology. In the last lecture, we had seen in detail about the structures of the renal corpuscle and also the filtration barrier. So today we'll be discussing on the <coughs> tubule or the tube-like structures of the kidney or renal tubules. So in the introductory class itself, we had seen the different parts of the renal tubule. So we do have the Bowman's capsule. So the Bowman's capsule, we do have the parietal layer which is lined by the single layer of epithelial cells. And we also saw the visceral layer which is seen towards the endothelium. So these are the specialized cells called as podocytes. So this Bowman's capsule is continued and the first portion is called proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. Remember all the tubules are made up of single layer of epithelial cells. So they are all made up of single layer of epithelial cells. Um, they are resting on the basement membrane. They are resting on the basement membrane and they are made up of a single layer of epithelial cells. And these epithelial cells uh, have structural and immunocytochemical characteristics which can vary from one segment of the tubule to the other segment of the tubule. All the cells are made up of single layer of epithelial cells but each tubule, each segment has got, the epithelial cells has got a few important characteristics. For example, the proximal tubule uh, which drains the filtrate. Now there is filtration of the blood through the different layers in the renal corpuscle. It is there in the Bowman space. From the Bowman space, first it enters into the proximal convoluted tubule. So initially it consists of a coiled segment. So it is convoluted or it is a coiled segment. Uh, the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule do have a microvilli which is a characteristic feature. So they do have the microvilli present. Uh, they are also called as brush border cells. So the convoluted part is followed by a small straight part. So it is a convoluted or a coiled segment of the proximal convoluted tubule has got a small straight part. Remember the point, all the convoluted structures are present in the cortex. So we have seen the kidney is made up of outer cortex and inner medulla, all the glomeruli all the convoluted structures are present in the cortex. So after a small straight segment, this proximal uh, segment drains into what is called loop of Henle. So the first part where it drains is called descending thin limb of descending thin limb of Henle's loop or it is simply called thin descending limb. So we do have the thin descending limb. So the thin descending limb is in the medulla. So this thin descending limb is in the medulla. It goes inside the medulla. <coughs> So the thin as a descending limb will 
end at a hairpin loop it takes a hairpin loop like structure then the tubule ascends up it goes up parallel to the descending limb so this is referred to be as ascending a limb ascending simply called as an ascending limb so this ascending limb depending upon the type of nephron can have two type two parts for example in case of what we call it as long loop nephron we do have a thin descending limb followed by a thin ascending limb then a thick ascending limb so the ascending limb can be thin it can consist of a thin part and also the thick part so it is a thin segment and a thick segment whereas in case of short loop nephrons the thin descending limb continues as a thin whereas in case of short loop there is no ascending thin limb so it consists it uh, comes as thin ascending limb and it goes as thick ascending limb only the portion of thin ascending limb is absent in case of short loop the ascending limb so here we do have a thick ascending limb goes back to the area of its origin so it goes back to the cortex it goes in an angle between the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole so here comes your afferent arteriole and here is the efferent arteriole so it goes in a angle between afferent and efferent arteriole then it leads to an another called segment called distal convoluted tubule dct distal convoluted tubule this distal convoluted tubule drains to the connecting tubules and this connecting tubule drains to the collecting tubules or collecting tubules initially so it may be <coughs> the cortical collecting tubules then it leads to the collecting ducts so collecting ducts so it may be cortical collecting duct medullary collecting duct which gives to the your calis calyx then to the renal pelvis then to the ureter then urinary bladder and the urethra okay so coming for the tubules we do have each segment is made up of single layer of epithelial cells proximal convoluted tubule is the first part which arises from the bowman's capsule which is characterized by the microvilli followed by the thin descending limb thin ascending limb thick ascending limb which goes back to the site of origin that is in between it goes in between the efferent and efferent arterioles then we have to have distal convoluted tubule collecting tubules and the collecting ducts so whenever the ascending limb that is the thick ascending limb reaches the efferent arteriole the cells here are more denser and it is darker so the cells of the ascending thick limb when it reaches near the efferent arteriole are denser and darker so this is called macula densa 
so macular densa always indicates the starting point of distal convoluted tubule from the area of macular densa the distal convoluted tubule starts so it shows the point of origin of distal convoluted tubule near to that of the macular densa on the afferent arteriole side they do have a specialized cells referred to be as so the specialized cells of the smooth muscles of the afferent arterioles are somewhat granular in appearance somewhat granular in appearance and they are called granular cells they are called granular cells which has a renin in it and we also have the cells that are present in the mesangium here so here we do have the mesangium here you do have the mesangium and we do have a specialized cells in the mesangium which we have already discussed so these mesangial cells here are extra glomerular so they are also called lasis cells they are also called lasis cells or extra glomerular cells so put together these are called juxta glomerular apparatus so the juxta glomerular apparatus consists of macular densa macular densa is the denser cells that is seen in the ascending thick limb when it reaches or when it goes in the angle between afferent and efferent arteriole number 2 it consists of granular cells which are the specialized cells of the afferent arteriole which has granulated in appearance which secretes the renin and number 3 extra glomerular cells or mesangial cells mesangial cells or it is also called as lasis cells which are extra glomerular mesangial cells that are present near the macular densa and the granular cells so put together they are called juxta glomerular apparatus which is important in the regulation or in the production and secretion of the renin this is an important enzyme which help in the regulation of your blood pressure <coughs> which is important in the ras system renin angiotensin aldosterone system <coughs> so as we had already discussed each segment do have a single layer of epithelial cells specified for that segment for example proximal convoluted tubule epithelial cells are specified or specific to the proximal convoluted tubule descending thin limb do have specified single layer of epithelial cell specific ascending thin limb do have specific cells single layer for the ascending thin limb and thick limb also consists of a specific cells including dct collecting tubules and collecting ducts however after the distal convoluted tubule the later part of the distal convoluted tubule the collecting ducts and the collecting tubules this consists of two different types of epithelial cells intermingled so you do have here from here two different types of epithelial cells so till now it was only one type of a cell but from the later part of the distal tubule you do have two different types of cells that are intermingled 
so these two cells number 1 is called principal cells the second is called intercalated cells intercalated cells and principal cells these are the specific cells they are found after the late part of distal convoluted reticulum principal cells are important in the regulation of sodium and potassium concentration they help in sodium reabsorption potassium secretion intercalated cells they can be of two types intercalated cell a intercalated cell b they are important in acid base balance so they play an important role in acid base balance so once the urine uh, once the blood is filtered here and it enters to the bowman space here this fluid is called glomerular filtrate later on when it moves to the tubular structure it is called as tubular fluid so the composition of tubular fluid will change in each segment so it may it because of the reabsorption and secretion of different things depending upon the need of the body the composition of the tubular fluid varies however after the calyx there is no change in the composition in the fluid except for the horse and the rabbit so in the horse and the rabbit there is production of mucus in the urethra therefore the urine is syrupy or it is mucoid in case of these two species except in case of these two species there is no any addition or deletion in the composition after the calyx the next important thing to be known is the classification of nephrons so the nephrons can be classified depending upon uh, where uh, the location of the glomerulus where the glomerulus is located it can be classified as superficial nephrons so superficial nephrons are those where the glomerulus are present near the cortex so then there is uh, tubule structures number b cortical nephrons so in the mid of the cortex if the glomerulus is present c juxta glomerular sorry juxta medullary nephrons juxta medullary nephrons juxta medullary nephrons are those where the glomerulus is present close or in junction between the medulla and the cortex so whereas in case of cortical nephron the loop or the tubules will not go deep into the medulla whereas in case of juxta medullary nephrons the the tubules the renal tubule will go deep into the medulla so the another way of classification is depending upon the presence or the absence of the <coughs> ascending thin limb as it has been already stated we do have the short loop and the long loop nephrons so long loop nephrons have got both thin ascending limb and thick ascending limb whereas in case of short loop the thin ascending limb is completely absent so the juxta medullary nephrons juxta medullary nephrons is important because counter current mechanism counter current mechanism occurs in case of juxta medullary nephron which is most important in the concentration of urine so we'll see what do you mean by concentration of urine in the later classes so the next is the 
blood flow to the kidneys as we have already seen so the blood flow to the kidneys it is a simple diagrammatic representation where we do get the renal artery so the renal artery enters via the hilum it gives rise to the afferent arteriole the afferent arteriole gives rise to the glomerulus from the glomerulus you do get efferent arteriole the other arteriolar system from that we do get the peritubular capillaries and the renal vein sometimes the afferent arteriole can lead to what is called as vasa recta <coughs> so in this diagram you can see here so the efferent arteriole in case of the juxta medullary nephron the efferent arteriole gives rise to branches which goes for the supply of the loop of henle so these are the parallel vessels that are penetrating deep inside the medulla so they are straight parallel vessels therefore they are called vasa recta vasa recta means straight vessels vasa recta means straight vessels which are descending down therefore we do have descending vasa recta and ascending vasa recta so descending vasa recta and ascending vasa recta so the ascending vasa recta also do have the fenestrated capillaries which is most important point to be remembered they do have fenestrated endothelium therefore there can be exchange of the substances then it will form the renal vein and it goes back to the general circulation so the point here is we do have two capillary beds one is the glomerulus number two peritubular capillaries we do have two arteriolar system one is the efferent the other is the efferent and we do have specialized circulation called vasa recta which is the straight parallel vessel going deep inside the medulla also having the perforated endothelium so that there can be exchange of the materials